I am Sanjay Joseph with a video on the poem The Darling Thrush written by Thomas Hardy one of the prominent and prolific poets of the Victorian era When he wrote this poem England was going through a difficult part due to industrialization A lot of changes had taken place in the field of politics economy and religious beliefs of the people traditions and customs and so on due to industrialization an agrarian society has turned into an industrialized society people migrated from villages to towns the people who owned the means of production became richer and richer and the laborers who toiled from morning till evening had to work again long hours to get their meager income in totality there were complete unrest hopelessness and chaos among the people this situation has made the poet at the end of the 19th century to look into the new century with a bleak hope now let us read the poem the first stanza I leant upon a coppice gate when frost was specked and grey and winter's drifts made desolate the weakening eye of day the tangled bile stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres and all mankind that haunted night had sought their household fires in the first stanza we see that the poet is leaning on a gate which leads to a woodland a forest it is a frosty evening the winter is in its last phase the poet says that the frost has made the landscape look like a great ghost here the speaker personifies frost when he says the frost was specter gray specter means ghost a gray looking ghost the winter drifts has made the landscape empty and lonely drifts means the leftover of something the winter's drifts can imply the end of the day or the end of the century the weakening eye of day means the sunset the sunset brings darkness and cold the sun the source of life becomes weak it means the life on the earth came to a standstill at the end of the winter in the next lines the poet uses a simile to compare the tangled by stems to strings of broken lyres by stems the stems of climbing creepers are compared to the broken strings of a musical instrument when the poet says that even the music has stopped it suggests that there is no unity joy and happiness whereas pain sorrow and sufferings have engulfed the lives of the people the last two lines of the stanza present a contrast between 
barren, lifeless landscape outside and the warm household by the household fires. The speaker is outside whereas others are comfortably inside. The world outside appears to be hopeless, lifeless, cold and frosty. Now let us go to the second stanza. The land's sharp features seem to be the century's corpse outland. His script, the cloudy canopy, the wind, its death lament. The ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken hard and dry. And every spirit upon earth seemed fervorless as I. The second stanza of the poem, the poet uses a series of metaphors associated with death. He tried to describe the lifeless landscape with these metaphors. The frosty landscape appears to the speaker like the corpse of the 19th century outstretched. The land becomes the map of everything that has happened over the course of the century. The nature seems to mourn the passing of the century. The cloudy sky seems like century's tomb and the winter wind its death song. The seeds that germinate and become plants get reduced in size, become hard and dry during the winter season. It means that the very process of nature are at a standstill. Everyone on the earth seems to be fervorless as the poet himself. The poet speaks not only about the depth of the century, but also the depth of hope. Now let us go to the third stanza. At once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead in a full hearted even song of joy illimited. An aged thrush, frail, gaunt, and small, in blast bereffled plume, had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing gloom. In the third stanza, the speaker suddenly hears an old thrush sings a song filled with joy. This even song, which is sung in the evening, brings back hope in the minds of the speaker. Though the bird looked very weak, thin and small, and its feathers were disordered by heavy wind. The bird has been singing wholeheartedly, joyfully at the end of the day when the sun has been disappearing at the horizon. Now let us go to the fourth stanza. So little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around that I could think there trembled through his happy good night air some blessed hope whereof he knew. In the last stanza of the poem, we see that the beautiful and full throat song sung by the thrush brings back hope to the people and also to the speaker. But at the same time, we notice that the speaker is unable to understand 
what terrestrial things what earthly things could make the bird so happy he thinks that the bird might have known some reasons for its joyful singing or carolings the poet has personified hope as if it were a human being giving hope to mankind it can be an indirect reference to jesus christ who has risen from the dead bringing hope to mankind the poet who has fully absorbed in his thoughts of hopelessness and despair cannot find the joy of the thrush because when he looks at the bird which is a symbol of hope that is aged fragile thin and small and above all its feathers are disordered completely by the wind so the poet thinks the corpse of the old century does not give way to the birth of the new one therefore the poem ends in complete despair so students